Hi, I'm George Self. This video is one in a series designed to help with Logisim Evolution Digital Logic Labs. This is lab number seven, Timers. The purpose of a timer is to time events in a circuit. Based on that time, certain events can start or stop. Certain sub-circuits can be activated or inactivated. Timers are also used as frequency dividers in some circuits where we need a frequency to be divided into smaller subsections. At any rate, this is the timer that you'll build for this lab. Let me first demonstrate the timer. I will mention that I have set the tick frequency for 4 Hz. That seems to be about right for this lab. I'm going to set a minimum count and a maximum count, just an arbitrary number. I'll start with uh, a 1 for up down, that should count up and reset. So we've put 4 in. Let me go ahead and start the uh, ticks and now it's counting up. If I count down, then it will begin to count down. Notice it loops around and counts from the minimum to the maximum, either up or down. Let me stop the ticks. And now I'll open up the student starting file. When you first get your file for this lab, there will be three sub-circuits. They are named version 1, version 2, and version 3. One of my goals with this lab was to give you some idea about how I proceeded to build this timer. So if I open up version 1, the first thing I did was use the Logisim Evolution counter. I simply put the counter in a circuit. I added a reset, load, up and down count, and a clock button. And then I was able to simply poke the clock and see what happened. I could count up and I could count down. This was nice and it was a good way to start. Notice I also have a value here, a 0A, that's 1010, zero, zero, and that get f gets fed into the counter as 1010000. Zero, 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 zero. So from this, I decided then to go on up to version 2. The version 2 of the counter is very similar, but I added a multiplexer, so now I could input both a maximum and a minimum value. And by doing this, I can go ahead and, and, and make this counter count up from some minimum value to a max, or count down from some max value to a minimum. I'll also point out with this sub-circuit and also with uh, version 1, I have here a BCD output. It takes a binary number in and it outputs a BCD number. That circuit is available to you in this BFH mega functions binary to BCD. So you can find that there. Version 3 of this timer really doesn't have much at all. This is the one that you are going to build. However, I've given you the exact instructions on how to build version 3 of this timer. So I'm going to go back to the instructor's version, to my version, and show you this timer. Uh, there's nothing in here that's not in your instructions. You'll see I still have the counter. I've got this binary to B BCD. I've also output a binary out so I can see that if I want to, so I can see either the BCD or the binary out. I've got a few OR gates in here and a couple of multiplexers now and an equal circuits. What this equal circuit will do is when the counter gets to a specific number, either the, up, the maximum or the minimum, depending on whether it's counting up or down, this equal circuit will go high and that will force a reset. That's what makes the counter loop, say from 8 back to 4. You're welcome to build this. In fact, you do need to build this and play around with it to see how it works. Now your challenge for this circuit is to correct a minor error with the circuit. Not an error, just a, a bug with the circuit. 
and let me show you that bug. The way the circuit's designed, and, and what you will design is this top circuit. The bottom one is the solution. What you will build is the top circuit. And the top circuit works just fine until it gets up to 60 seconds. And at 60 seconds, it goes on up to 61, 62, 63. But that really isn't how people think. That's not how humans work. When it gets to 61 seconds, what we really want is one minute and one second. My solution fixes that. So I do have minutes and seconds. And this particular counter would count up to uh, 59 seconds. Then the next tick would set this value at one and the lower values uh, would reset back to one. So I would get a one minute and one second, one minute and two seconds, and so forth. So your lab write-up will have you build a functional up-down counter where you can set the maximum and minimum values. What you need to do is make that counter a little more human-friendly and actually have it uh, count minutes and seconds instead of just seconds. That's about it for this lab. Good luck with it. As in all of your labs, please don't get too frustrated. If you run into a roadblock, stop, contact me, and I'll help. I'll be seeing you online.